Hello everybody, welcome back to this channel. Today we're going to talk about the linear transformer. And the linear transformer, we have two topics here. The first one is uh, if we model the linear transformer as a couple inductors and how we're going to uh, have the equations and how we're going to solve the circuit uh, with the linear transformer. The second one is the T equivalent circuit. The T equivalent circuit is not covered in the uh, text, but I think it is uh, very useful, so I'm, I'm going to include it in this lecture here. And uh, uh, we're going to look at a couple of examples along the way. And uh, uh, the link to the uh, uh, Google Colab notes you can find in the um, uh, description down below. And let's start with the uh, linear transformer. And the linear transformer, there are no formal definition for this. Um, but the linear transformer is still different from practical transformers. The linear transformer uh, is more realistic compared to the ideal transformer. Remember last time we talked about the ideal transformer, we had four different assumptions, right? We assume um, the uh, there's no leakage or perfect coupling, and there is no um, uh, there's no uh, the resistance in the windings. And also, there is no uh, the uh, there is no core losses. Also, the permeability of the core is infinity. So these are four things we assume. And in the linear transformer, we kind of relax those assumptions by a little bit, and we include two kind of the uh, non-idealities here. One is we are the we allow the leakage, so we don't assume perfect coupling. And two is we don't assume <coughs> the infinite permeability of the magnetic core. And that will kind of uh, make the linear transformer different from the uh, ideal transformer, still different from the practical transformer because we do not include the uh, winding resistance. And two, we do not include the core losses. If we do include the core losses, then we need to some resistance to model that. Uh, anyway, so uh, there are two ways to model the linear transformer. One way is to use a couple inductors. If we use a couple inductor, nothing really different from the couple inductor itself, right? So let's see if we have a linear transformer and we model the couple inductor and we have the uh, self inductance L1, L2 for the primary winding and the secondary winding respectively. And then we have the mutual inductance M and in time domain, so everything in time is time of fun function of time, and this is in time domain. And we're gonna can we can write the equations B1 is equal L1 di1 dt plus or minus m times di2 dt, right? And V2 is gonna be equal plus or minus m di1 dt or uh, plus L2 di2 dt. And so this is for the minus case, so this is for the plus case, right? Because they both current go flowing into the dotted terminal and their fluxes will add up and otherwise they're going to be uh, subtractive for each other. And um, the more often we're going to use the linear transformer in the context of the sinusoidal sources, and in that case, it will be more useful or more convenient to mod, to uh, use the uh, have the quantity come for, come uh, transformed to phasors. If we transform everything in phasors, uh, remember the uh, differentiation property of the phasors. When you when you transform the derivative of a of a sinusoidal function, and then you just multiply the um, the uh, the phasor of that sinusoidal function by J omega, right? Omega is the fundamental frequency of the source uh, you have. So therefore, if the phasors, if we write the equation, that's going to be something like a J omega L1 uh, times I1 in phasor plus or minus J omega M times uh, I2 and plus or minus and this is V sub 1. V sub 2 is going to be equal plus or minus J omega M times I sub 1 plus J omega L2 times I sub 2. Uh, so 
the uh, more than often uh, we recognize this is going to be a reluctant reactance for the self reactant for the primary winding and this is the mutual reactance and x sub m and x sub m and this is the x sub 2 okay and uh, uh, so this is the um, x1 x2 these are self reactances and x sub m that's the mutual reactance okay so that's for the and if you uh, want to model this in s domain it's also possible but it'll be way more complicated if you have the initial conditions right so let's see with zero initial condition zero initial condition and then we have uh, the uh, in, in s domain b sub uh, b sub one s going to be equal uh, s l one this is like an impedance self impedance times i one s plus or minus s times m uh, i sub two s and v two s is going to be equal plus or minus s times m times i one s plus s sub l2 times i sub 2s and uh, of course this is going to be for the minus case this is going to be for the plus case and this is going to be uh, the my uh, the uh, plus case for this one and this is going to be the minus case okay so this is the modeling of the uh, linear transformer in the time domain in phasor domain and in s domain next we're going to look at an example uh, how we're going to solve the circuit in S domain, in the uh, phasor domain. Uh, I'm going to start a new clip, a uh, new video clip. I'll see you in a moment.